Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving break. I'm going to start off with our newest perfect pick, but I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that it's Ghosts by Raina Telgemeier, who brought us Sisters, Smile, and Drama, and that I bought 15 copies of it for you. But the not-so-good news is that pretty much as soon as I added it to the library catalog, alert students put it on hold right away, and so all 15 copies were checked out within 24 hours. So, if you want a copy of Ghosts, you'll need to either access the Destiny app or go follow it, depending on your device, and put a copy on hold right away, or come into the library and we'll put it on hold for you. This week, I also want to feature some of the books that were in the book fair, beginning with The Darkest Hour. In 1943, 16-year-old Lucy Blaze is the newest recruit in Covert Ops, a secret espionage and sabotage organization run by girls. Her mission in German-occupied France is to track down information about a weapon that could wipe out all of Western Europe and then dismantle it before it can be used. Find out how Lucy succeeds in The Darkest Hour. Not to be outdone by the girls, The Boys Who Challenged Hitler is another title that was featured in the book fair this year. In it, we learn about a handful of teenagers in Denmark who take on the occupying Nazis in an inspiring true story of courageous resistance. They call themselves the Churchill Club in honor of the British Prime Minister, and though they were eventually captured and imprisoned by the Germans, their heroic actions helped spark a nationwide resistance movement against the Nazis. Lost in the Pacific, 1942, is another great true story of World War II. On October 21, 1942, a B-17 bomber droned high over the Pacific Ocean, sending a desperate SOS into the air. The crew included America's greatest living war hero on a secret mission deep into the battle zone. But the plane was lost and it burned through its final gallons of fuel. At 1.30 p.m., the crew had only one choice left, an emergency landing at sea. If the crew survived the impact, they would be left stranded without food or water thousands of miles from civilization. This is the story of eight men, three inflatable rafts, and 68 million square miles of ocean. What would it take to make it back alive? Okay. Let's change it up a bit from those World War II stories with a bit of Frozen Charlotte. When Sophie arrives on the Isle of Skye in Scotland to spend the summer with her cousins, she finds a house haunted by the ghost of a girl who attended school there a hundred years ago. She also learns about her cousin Rebecca, who died young and is never mentioned by her family. Sophie does discover that Rebecca collected dolls based on an old song about a dead girl named Charlotte. Now the evil dolls are screaming to be released from the house. Sophie must somehow solve the mystery of the frozen Charlotte dolls before the whole family is destroyed. Sting, book two in the Loot series, is here. March and Jules are teenage twins following in their father's footsteps as jewel thieves. But when their latest job goes wrong, they end up with just one jewel, a sapphire called the Morning Star. It also happens to be one of three cursed jewels, and the only way they can break the curse is to elude the FBI, Interpol, and a gang of international criminals. They need to find the other two jewels and reunite all three. If this series is new to you, be sure to check out and read the book called Loot first. Have you ever wished you could live in a life-sized gingerbread house? There's one in Texas large enough for a family of five. What about a secret underwater city? One was discovered in China over 15 years ago at the bottom of a lake. The latest edition of Ripley's Believe It or Not 
is packed with wild and wacky facts you really won't believe until you see the amazing pictures. Look for the jellyfish twice the size of a human and see works of art made entirely out of fruit. From an ex-soldier with a bionic arm to seawater that glows in the dark, you learn about jaw-dropping people, places, and animals that you never knew existed in Ripley's Believe It or Not Special Edition 2016. The final two book fair selections for this week go together. The first is called The Body in the Woods. While helping the Portland County Sheriff's search and rescue team to find a missing autistic man, teenagers Alexis, Nick, and Ruby find a body instead. They join forces to find the girl's murderer and form an unlikely friendship as well. I read this book a few weeks ago and it's really, really good. It's based on an actual search and rescue team in Portland, Oregon, where teenagers volunteer to find lost hikers and other people. It's also the first book in the Point Last Seen series. April Henry is the writer who brought us Girl Stolen and the Night She Disappeared, and she won't disappoint you with this one either. Blood Will Tell is the second book in the Point Last Seen series by April Henry. When a woman's body is found in a vacant lot, suspicion falls on a teenage boy who lives only a few blocks away. He owns several knives, loves first-person shooter video games, and doodles violent scenes in his school notebooks. He also happens to be a member of the Portland County Sheriff's search and rescue team. In this second installment of the series, Nick becomes the prime suspect in the murder. His very interest in search and rescue seen as proof of his fascination with violence. Can his friends Alexis and Ruby find a way to clear Nick's name before it's too late? Find out in Blood Will Tell. And by the way, there is some surprising information in this book and I do recommend that you read the first book, The Body in the Woods, before you read this one. In public library news, all teens are invited to make ornaments out of book pages. These DIY ornaments make cool decorations or thoughtful gifts. It's happening at the Hampton Memorial Library in Easley on Tuesday, December 6th at 4.30 p.m. For more information, you can call the library at 850-7077. Finally, before I go, don't forget that there's still plenty of time to complete the Swamp Rabbit Hat Trick Challenge by reading three books before December 9th. I hope that you all got at least one book read over the Thanksgiving break, but even if you didn't, you can still get the job done. Just be sure to tell your homeroom teacher how many books you've completed so far, and remember that every student who successfully completes the challenge is guaranteed to receive a free ticket to attend the Swamp Rabbit Hockey Game in Greenville on February 19th. Thanks again for tuning in. Be sure to thank your teacher for showing the video, and I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. I've got more great books to share with you next week, but in the meanwhile, don't forget to be awesome. Bye-bye.